is I wanted to get across a little bit about what um, Jessica is doing about equipment sharing and in particular if you're not already familiar with what we do you might know about the Janet network, you might know about Edgerone. What we've experienced is that people are coming um, from quite a wide range of different perspectives. So if you're a librarian you know an awful lot about our content deals with publishers. If you're an IT director you know a lot about Janet and Edurone. We've also been doing a great deal of work with cloud providers like Amazon and Google lately. So I actually had a really good meeting with Google just yesterday. But this bit down the bottom, by no, last and by no means least, is trying to figure out how we can all connect together better to help the asset sharing agenda, but also not just within institutions for efficiency, but also to help institutions to share facilities with industry. So that's where Innovate UK particularly come in. So we've been doing those things. Um, if you look at it from purely from an efficiency perspective, then things like those content deals loom very large. So this Knowledge Base Plus, which helps you to track those things, we reckon it saves the sector around four and a half billion a year. These are not insignificant sums of money. They might not sound like much on their own, but when you add them up, then you do start to get to the hundreds of millions of pounds that we were talking about earlier on. So another example here is DigiMap, which is all about licensing geospatial data and some services built on top of that. And through that collective bargaining, we believe that saves the sector around 40 million a year. So this is starting to sound a bit more significant. You know that two and a half million, it might just seem like line noise. When you add these things together, you start to get to more interesting numbers and bigger numbers. Um, but here's, here's my question. Why, why do asset sharing? And I started to talk about that a moment ago. From our perspective, it's increasingly about things like how do we connect industry to Janet? So we've got this world-class network here. If you're a firm, let's say, based in a science park, that could give you an enormous boost. That could be something that could completely change the nature of a tech-heavy enterprise that's just getting started. So there's a few things like that that we think we might be able to do. Um, we heard already downstairs about the cost-sharing group, so I won't say any more about that. But I will say a couple of words about what we're doing to uh, create some very, very real physical shared facilities. So you might think that shared facilities is all research instruments, mass spectrometers, radio telescopes and what have you. Our shared data center, which uh, recently went live with just under a million pounds of HEFCE investment, has uh, some really significant anchor tenants, and they've actually filled up the first segment of the data center. So the concept here was if you're based in central London, real estate is hugely expensive. In Slough, or North Windsor, which we sometimes call it, Real estate's a little, real estate's a little cheaper. So, so we can get a, a quite, quite impressive facility, which is actually cheaper to operate than, a, particularly if you're a London university. We're starting also to see colleges taking some interest in this now. And what you can see in this tweet that I've clipped out here, literally from a couple of days ago, is uh, King's College starting to move their supercomputer facility in there. So a lot of the things that we're trying to do to support efficiency and effectiveness are well, perhaps less tangible, things like licensing deals. But then there's some real, real physical artifacts there. You can go and visit that. It's a real place. And I mentioned supercomputing. Uh, in a similar vein, we're trying to make supercomputing easier to share. So we've done some brokerage around standard contractual terms, which means that working with these providers we heard a little bit about the N8 earlier on. That's, that's one of several providers we're working with to make an, a total investment of around 60 million of public funding for supercomputing accessible for institutions to share, but also for industry to plug into as well. So there's a lot in there about security and information assurance. And where does that ultimately take us? Well, let's say that you're a firm that wants to get involved with something like this. You might want to prototype something. You might want to build a thousand computer-based models of it, test them to destruction before you make a physical prototype. When you make a physical prototype, you probably need somewhere to test it. 
and the institutions have not just the supercomputers, they also have the wind tunnels and the other kinds of facilities, materials characterization, for instance, that you might want to use to do that. So we think that there's an awful lot that we can do by starting to connect the dots together. What does it look like when we join the dots? Um, and what would a one-stop shop, what would a one-stop shop for asset sharing really look like? And from our perspective, uh, we thought it would be interesting to take a look at a piece of software called Kit Catalog, which was originally developed at Loughborough University. And Kit Catalog is a kind of an Argos catalog for your equipment data. So if you have um, a whole bunch of equipment that you would like to raise awareness of, if you like to tell people, well, this stuff is out there, um, you get a nice web page. It's not an Argos catalog because there's no buy button. Um, but in reality, you can inquire, you get the contact details, the people that you can talk to about it. And recently, we developed an app to go alongside. So literally, if you're sat there, if your gene sequencer blew up this morning and you think, crikey, I'm stuffed now because I have a big collection of data to get through, you can use this to quickly find somebody else nearby who has a similar facility. So, so I think this is very interesting. Um, a lot of, lot of institutions have said um, this is something that we, we actually want to spend some serious effort exploring. So we've got these 10 or so institutions who are involved in our pilot, and then it's very good to hook up with Southampton around the equipment data portal, and we've got some uh, kind of subsidiary interest from institutions who are, who are looking at it in the context of a school or a faculty where, let's say, they're particularly equipment heavy, so there's a lot of lab work that goes on there. So, very pleased to see that this, this is starting to gel, and we're going to do that over a period of, of a couple of years. So, we, what we want to understand from that is, is meaningful. I think it would be a good use of your equipment out there. Well, at what point does it become worth cataloging some. And also from the institution's perspective, how much influence can I exert? If I want to steer this, if I want to input into the product roadmap, well, what, what can I do there? And what is practical to achieve when we have even just a dozen or so institutions that have some role or some involvement in this? So ultimately, it comes down to things like running costs. So running costs are huge, and we need to understand that so we can understand if there's a business case. For instance, that could be something that we throw in with a JISC subscription. It could just be something that everybody gets. But we need to know if we can afford to run it that way. If it costs us an awful lot of money to run something like that, it probably isn't going to be part of your core subscription. It's going to be an optional extra. We also know that there are some folk who have built their own databases, there are people who are using spreadsheets, access, and all kinds of stuff. The, the bottom line, and this is where equipment.data particularly comes in, this feeds into what Andy and co are doing down in Southampton, which gives you a sum total of around 10,000 items of high-value equipment. So we think these things typically, people are putting in equipment uh, available for sharing with a value of maybe 20, 25K or above. Um, We've got this nice example of Newcastle University alone, which is sharing about £16 million pounds worth of stuff um, through, through Kit Catalog. We feed all that stuff into equipment data, and the sum total of the stuff which is available for sharing, even at a conservative estimate, is over £200 million. Pounds. So we started off with some, some big numbers, but overall they seem quite small, that £2.5 million that I mentioned earlier on. And quite rapidly, we're going up to some really quite significant figures. So I think that this is, this is going to be one to watch. And I'm very pleased, actually, that we've just agreed that we're going to do a little bit of co-funding of equipment.data. So over, over the next few months, we're going to be trying to work out how do we all collaborate together to, to take that forward. But what I wanted to do next was hand over to Jackie who's going to tell us a little bit about how they've been using Kit Catalog at UCL. So over to you, Jackie. 